This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. So we'll have a little fun with Alan, and we'll talk all things Miami Dolphins. Obviously, that's going to be a uh, sore spot for uh, for a while now, and and it's you know the 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 part about this story that kind of gets it has all kinds of jagged edges. Let's let's put it that way. Is that there's a difference of opinion on all kinds of things, whether Tua can play, whether Tua can't whether it's the coach's uh, issue or whether it's not, whether it's front office or not, whether it's all of them, whether it's only one of them, whether it's two of the three, whether you throw in the owner also, whether, you know, it's, it's this whole argument. And, and, you know, I've mentioned this before. This is the part that sucks that at the end of the year, it pits us against each other, even though it's not your fault, even though it's not my fault, we don't play the game. We don't coach the game. We don't prepare for the game. We don't draft. We don't do We don't do anything. You know, all we do is watch, emotionally get involved, financially get involved. And, you know, it's one of those things that's kind of tied to your DNA, right? I'm a born and bred South Floridian for 55 years. From the moment I was born in Belle Glade, Florida, and growing up here in South Florida, all I do is eat, live, and breathe South Florida sports. That's always the heart and soul. So it's part of my DNA. You know, I grew up with the Dolphins and the Strikers. That's what, and the Canes. I had the Dolphins and the Canes, then we added the Strikers, and then that's it. And then later on, we started getting the, the Marlins and the Heat and the Panthers and all that kind of stuff and Inter Miami. Well, Fusion and then Inter Miami. So I've always been a local guy. You know, that's always been my thing. And a lot of you are the same way. And so then this hurts, right? It hurts that the Marlins aren't active in free agency. It hurts that they're really not committed to winning by spending money. You know what I mean? It's frustrating that the Panthers have fallen short for so many years. I think now, you know, they're going to explode, but whatever. That's, I, I almost feel like the Panthers are like Bitcoin. That they're there, it's it's gaining momentum, gaining momentum, and it's about to just explode. You know what I mean? And so, anyway, so this pits us against each other because in the end, whether you you're right or wrong about Tua or about Flo or about Greer or about Ross or about the whole team or about this or about that or whatever it is, in the end, whether you're right or wrong, we all want the same thing. We all just want the Dolphins to win, dude, because it's been so damn long, you know, and and it pains me to see like these hardcore Dolphin fans, you know, whether it's Big Ed or whether it's NorCal or whether it's Dolph Freaky or whether it's, you know, you name it, okay? It's the, the bandits, whoever I could come up with, you know, Gorilla Luke. And, and and you see all these hardcore Dolphin fans, man, and they are in pain. And they are quick to turn the page and say, oh, you know, it was a rough year, this and that, but I'll be here next year. And in the end, that's what it really is all about. We can bitch, we can complain, we can point fingers, but you and I know we're not quitting. You know, we can talk all the crap we want. You can burn somebody's jersey or whatever. You're still going to love the team. You're still going to watch next year, whatever. It's... It, it sucks, and, and that's the part about all of this, that it ends up stinging all of us, right? And then we end up arguing amongst each other what the hell's the problem, and oh, oh, you're wrong, and you're wrong, and no, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, no, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And in the end, it's like, you know, it's them, not us. We're not the problem, okay? We do our jobs, all right? We love the team. We talk about the team, buy the tickets, travel to see them, wear the jerseys, buy the banners, you name it, right? I mean, recently, right? We we added to the show this new Dolphin banner, this new Heat banner, this new Canes banner, right? Cost me money. Why the hell do I think I, why did I add it? You think I added just for effects? No. I had it because I often love these teams and I want them all to win and win championships every year.
But it's just, it's, it, it's, that's the part that sucks about all of this, man. Is that now we end up here, you know, arguing with each other about this, that, and, you know, whatever, you no know, fire flow, we want hardball. And, oh, I don't want hardball. And, uh, you know, whatever. It's, it, it, uh, man, it's just frustrating. And it's year after year. And, you know, uh, you, you thought that the first two years were the building blocks. And then, you kind of look at this year and, you know, and again, we all have difference of opinions here on how this thing is going and what direction it's going in and should they continue in this direction. But that's the, that's the effed up part, man, that we just end up here fighting against each other when we all want the same thing. We all, we all want a team that wins, a team that can represent, uh, Miami Dolphin fans all over the world the right way. Look, great example is the Miami Heat. It's an awesome example, right? Here's the difference between watching the Miami Heat. The Panthers are like that now, too. It's just most of you don't notice it because you don't follow hockey, but I'll leave that there later. But the Heat tonight, or even the other night when you're watching against Golden State. No matter how many guys they're injured, no matter Jimmy went out, whatever, you stay watching. Do you know why? Because you have Rex Chapman burned in your mind. Because you have 31-10 with a bunch of scrubs in the second half of a season burned in your mind. Because you have a bunch of young guys that ended up going to the finals in the bubble in your mind. My point is that with the Miami Heat, the hope is always there because it's such an exceptional organization from top to bottom that you're always going to be watching no matter what. Now, with the Marlins, you could give up and not even watch because you gave up. You don't believe in anything that they're going to do. You know, the Panthers, for those of you, you know, in other years, not now. I mean, if you do it now, you're an idiot, but... I'm just saying, in years past, you're like, yeah, whatever. They're, they're, just, they're not doing anything. They're out of here. And with the Heat, it's different. With the Heat, you're always watching because you never know what you're going to what you're gonna see. Like tonight, you know they're not going to play with Butler, right, in Portland. And they're missing Bam, and they're missing a bunch of other guys and all that good stuff. And then you're going, well, they should lose, but wait a minute. We're talking about the Heat. <laughs> we're talking about Eric Spolstra. We're talking about a real coach that knows how to prepare their players and even the backups. Like yesterday, you're watching Caleb Martin, dude. And that dude just continues to look like, I mean, well, two nights ago, and, you're, and he just looks like he's developing into actually a player. I know it's too early to call it, but damn, dude. You know what I'm saying? You're saving. You're like, or you're Tevin, And you're like, damn, this kid can rebound. You know, he's got some skills offensively. And so tonight you'll be watching the Portland game because even as injury riddled and how many people they're missing for whatever reasons, you still have a shot because it's the heat. And we don't feel like that about the Dolphins because they haven't earned that. And that's where we all want to get. We want to get to the point where we believe in the Dolphins no matter what. And you can always believe in the Heat no matter what. Because even if they lose against Golden State, you know, like Ira and I were talking about yesterday, there's no such thing as a satisfactory loss. But damn, dude, I mean, considering everything that happened to them and, and all the people missing the other night, and they still were a tight game all the way to the end, you got to go, holy crap, against the number one team in the NBA. These guys still gave it all to them. And it's funny because sometimes I get to see the – other broadcast, and they had nothing but praise for the for the Miami Heat. Nothing. That's all they could do is talk about how you never, you never, you you can never ever, you know, have a letdown against this team. They will make you pay. Don't look at the name on the jersey. Look at the name on the front, because that's what they play for. You know, they were. I mean, they, it was like impeccable respect the Warrior uh, announcers had for anybody. You know what I mean? That was on that team. And that's kind of, you know, what we want for our Dolphins. We want to get to the point where the Dolphins are that team. That you always 
Shula had it like that, right? Didn't matter. Woodstock, Super Bowl, Doug Peterson, 325. You know what I'm saying? It didn't matter. He was going to try to win. He didn't care if Guy Benjamin was his quarterback. He was going, you know, you, you, you felt like you had a chance. Boy, young people right now are going, Guy Benjamin. What the hell is a Guy Benjamin? <laughs> and the older ones are going, wow, that's a blast from the past. Uh, and, and Pablo goes, uh, I'm impressed by this new kid guy. Exactly. Kyle guy. Like comes out of nowhere, got the moxie shooting lights out. And this is the heat. This is the heat. This is why I've said over the last few years, do you even take summer league for granted with the heat? No, you don't. Because Summer League seems to find a new guy. They're like, hey, who's that young guy? Wow. And you, you, this isn't like a mini camp in football where some guy plays well and then all of a sudden you think it's going to translate and it usually never does, you know, that kind of stuff. But with the Heat, it's different. If they find the guy in, in the Summer League, you're like, okay, wait a minute. There might be something to this. They've been doing this for two decades now. All right. They find guys. I don't know what it is, but they'll find a guy or two or whatever, and, and they're doing it now. Like to get to that point with the Dolphins. So at the end of the year, we're not fighting against each other about this. <laughs> we're not arguing about what's wrong. Let's talk about what's right. Let's talk about what we can add on top of what's right. You know what I mean? That's kind of what the Panthers are doing now. And by the way, they do the same thing. They've missed Barkov and they win. They miss players, then they miss a goalie and they keep winning. They miss. They have. They've done the same thing this year. They've missed guys and they're so deep that they've been able to even overcome at times their best player. I know most of you don't notice that, don't care about it. I get it, but that's kind of where we're at, man. It's tough. <laughs> 